Hello and welcome to Medicine in 5 Minutes. My name is Dr. Moses Kazevu. This is a series on my YouTube channel where we look at medical topics at the shortest space of time. Today in this review, Medicine in 5 Minutes episode, we're going to be talking about fibroids. Remember that fibroids are also referred to as leomyomas. These are pretty much benign smooth muscle tumors and they're going to be driven by estrogen. So it means that they're going to grow in response to estrogen. And that means that after menopause, after menopause, it's supposed to shrink. Then these fibroids are much more common in black individuals and in individuals of about the age of 30 to 50 years. Some risk factors include a family history positive for fibroids, for example, a mother or a sister. Ethnicity, fibroids are five times more common in black women than they are in white women. Nulliparity, because there's an increase in estrogen exposure. Obesity, because there's going to be increased production of estrone, which is a form of estrogen by the adipocytes, as well as polycystic ovarian syndrome. You may also get some hyperestrogenic states. The fibroid locations may either be in the body of the uterus, they may be single or multiple, you refer to those as corporal fibroids. They are going to be found either below the mucosa, within the wall of the uterus, as well as just below the serosa. So the most common type are the intramural type or interstitial type that are found within the walls of the uterus. Or the, then these are later followed by the subserous type or the subperitoneal type below the serous aspect and then you have the submucosal type just underneath the endometrium. This may also be found in the cervical region. Some clinical features involve patients being asymptomatic so you may not even know that you have fibroids in 70% of the time but if there are symptoms there may be some menstrual abnormalities such as menorrhagia and metrorrhagia. You may have some dysmenorrhea which is a painful menses. You may have dyspareunia which is painful sexual intercourse. You may have infertility. There may also be some pressure symptoms that may cause frequency, urgency, nocturia, diarrhea, constipation, low abdominal pains, even some abdominal enlargement and recurrent miscarriages. When you perform an, exam an abdominal examination as well as a bimanual pelvic examination, you may feel a firm to hard mass. Sometimes it may be cystic if it undergoes cystic degeneration. The margins are usually well defined. The surface is nodular and the mobility is quite restricted. When you percuss this mass, it's going to show some downness to percussion. Some investigations include a transvaginal or a transabdominal ultrasound that can help you detect intramural as well as subserosal fibroids, a hysterol salpingogram which can help you detect submucosal as well as intramural fibroids, the hysteroscopy which can help you detect the submucosal fibroids, and of course definitive diagnosis is by histology where we could actually distinguish whether it is a benign tumor or a malignant tumor. You may also want to do a complete blood count or a full blood count in cases of anemia. Other investigations are aimed at ruling out malignancy, so things like a pap smear, an endometrial biopsy, a hysteroscopy as well as a dilatation and a curettage. When it comes to the management for the asymptomatic patients, we do not want to do anything. The only thing that we want to do is order these annual examinations and we could do an ultrasound to actually monitor the size of the fibroids. We get worried if it keeps increasing in size. In pregnancy where these fibroids can undergo red degeneration and become very painful, you may just tell this woman or advise this woman for some bed rest and give her some narcotics. And definitive management is of course removal of the fibroids. In women that want to maintain fertility, we want to perform a myomectomy. And then those that have satisfied uh, parity or um, do not wish to give birth to children anymore, you can perform a hystero hysterectomy. Now in other patients that have symptoms, you may manage the symptoms like for example with heavy menstrual bleeding, you may give NSAIDs such as mephenamic acid, you may give tranexanic acid as well as combined oral contraceptive pills. Thank you for taking your time to listen to this lecture in medicine in five minutes on fibroids. Until next time, my name is Dr. Moses Kazevu. Bye-bye.